going, everybody? Travis Took here. I'm here with Anthony Martinez, and we are bringing you all things positive during this end of the world like scenario that the news is showing everyone every day. But really, we just want to share some of the positivity that we've been experiencing lately. I know. It's a really stressful time for a lot of people. We're all dealing with this together. And I think one thing that we were talking about before was the kind of global fear that we're all experiencing. And the idea that, you know, that I wanted to share is that the fear is normal. It should drive you enough to take the right precautions, wash your hands, stay away from people. But up to a certain point, it stops serving serving any more purpose and then we're just living with this fear that is not helping us and what we've been doing is really working to find uh, safe but effective ways to continue to have class and work with the students and bring some positivity during this time so just want to talk about that Anthony you guys know is a really awesome student in school and he's not able to go to school anymore so we'll chat a little bit about that but um anyway that's what the focus is today all positive things none of the scary stuff because you're going to see that when you turn the tv on anyway so Anthony how have you been doing since uh, all this started I'm pretty good uh Oh, pretty great. Like, not to say that school, uh, to a certain extent, got boring or uh, too much okay. to... You, you, as soon as you got the blonde hair, you just turn into this rebel. Yeah. Now you're just like, I'm <laughs> out right, of school. Woo! It was right at the perfect time. It was like right before uh, spring w- break was supposed to end. I went blonde and I, everything's gone downhill. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Um, I'm still able to do all of the the school work and take care of that uh, online, just like uh, we've done here. It's like everything shifted to virtual classes and online content and receiving it that way. I'm taking care of that. I'm a lot happier, I think, <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> not to say school is bad, uh, because I like I like going to school. I like learning, but um, I think I I have a lot more time to do things that I enjoy. So I'm I, I love reading. So I've gotten uh, through like two books now since we've uh, ended regular schooling. We're on the online schooling. So I take care of all my schoolwork in like the span of one and a half days, and then I, I'm free to do whatever I want. But uh, I think now is a time where you can really take time in something that you want to do. And I think I read a post on Facebook that was like, if you don't come out of this uh, with a new hobby or a new strength or uh, with something new, then you did it wrong. Now, I agree with that partially. It's like you have your priorities, like take care of yourself, your family, um, and all that first, everything that needs to be taken care of. But then hopefully you'll have that, that left over time and really spend it on yourself. So I, I picked up running. I know JP really loves running. And like I went to go check the mail. I was telling you this. And I was like, man, I really don't want to go back home. <laughs> so I, I, I just went running. And every time I came on a, um, an intersection where I didn't know uh, where I was, I'd always go to the direction that I, I wasn't certain of. So if I knew if I turned left, I'd end up back uh, closer to my house. I went right because I was like, okay, let's go as far as we can. And then uh, I, I went six miles and I came back and I was like, I'm glad I did that. So now I have those periods where I can do stuff like that. And I'm I'm happy about that, but I'm also looking forward to things going back to normal, of course. I took a totally opposite approach. I just started eating as much as I could <laughs> and uh, turned that into a, I don't know if you would call it a fitness challenge, but it was certainly a body transformation challenge. Unfitness challenge. Yeah, a fatness <laughs> challenge, right? Well, I normally weigh about 170 pounds, um, and... Uh, like nobody envies they're like oh you're lucky you have a fast metabolism because some people are trying to lose weight and i'm trying to gain weight and flaunting it but uh, but it, but i i think yeah one opportunity during this time is to do something that otherwise would be considered strange or very out of the ordinary because everything is out of the ordinary and so for me it was like well i've never been that big i don't really want to be that big um but i could be I can, I just have to like follow a plan and try it. Try something I've never done before. 200 pounds, lifting really heavy weights, eating a lot of food. I don't want to stay there, but if you're doing something that is healthy, that is new, that is exciting to you and gives you cause to wake up and put effort towards something, then I think that is what 
life experience is all about. That is that is what people that stay younger longer, at least in their minds, are consistently doing. Whether, like you said, learning a new skill or picking up on something that was maybe uh, a wish and actually turn it into a hobby and maybe even turn it into a passion. Like, that's what JP did. Like, he just started running to give him something uh, an extra cur- curricular activity to do and then he just in within like a year he just ran a full marathon in you know sub eight minutes which is pretty fast for 26 miles uh, and there's no like reason on paper to do that in terms of like well it's not your job you're not getting paid for it. you're not getting famous for it. you're not what are you doing it for it's because it's your life you know you have an opportunity to do something and you can sit around and be afraid all day or you can get up and do the thing that you only wanted to do before that now you have the opportunity to do and it's not to say is like everyone is still there a lot of people at home still are working from home a lot of kids well all the kids are doing schooling from home so it's not downplaying any of that and uh taking away from the fact that you're, you're still busy uh we're still busy we're i think we're busier than ever trying to put, put out content i, I know for me classes. yeah like i have less breaks and more more work time just trying to fill in activities and um things that we need to do with the team to keep everybody engaged so i know that you know i'm talking like everyone has free time but but really some of us are working even more but the situation is is different. We have a little more maybe leverage within our working hours. But go ahead. Yeah, like if you look um, like at any time where we thought it was from like an outsider's perspective, it, it looks pretty bad. And uh, that's all you pr- pretty much see is whenever you talk about the, the virus, which, which it is bad. It's people are getting sick um, and a lot of people will recover, but then – course you you are going to have the ones that uh, unfortunately pass but you have this time where you're at home and it's valuable time because it's something that you're not going to get back after the virus is gone so we we can we can have our stimulus checks and all of that Um, but whenever it comes down to it this is time that we can spend on ourselves so uh, we've been doing a lot of the classes with our students and something that we're pushing is maintaining your goals even at this time it's like your black belt is still attainable even though we're at a time where things are kind of uncertain. Yeah, that you, um, I think like Tony Robbins said, like what do you do when you don't have a lot of resources? You have to be resourceful. So you have to maximize what the opportunities that you have. And I, I honestly had did not know how the online class were going to go because I've never done that before i've done zoom meetings to talk with somebody sitting down in a chair i've never had to engage in a classroom type like activity and like push the button to see people and zoom out and unmute and mute people and i was worried that no one was going to like it and it was going to be chaos and everybody's just going to want you know to um to not join and and my fears were um, almost realized on like the first day because there were very few people that attended because we didn't, you know, we kind of announced like, oh, okay, we're doing Zoom meetings. I guess we're going to do it. Uh, but then day two, we had about twice as many people. By the end of the first week, we had a lot more. This week that we're wrapping up here, we had uh, way more attendance than we had in week one. And it was just a matter of kind of getting a hold of people and pushing them, um, which I've, you know, I think I appreciate the... The, the, the need to effectively communicate more than I maybe did before. And I, you know, I would hope that anyone in the situation would take something from this that maybe you took for granted before. And I know for me, um, I really thrive off of the human interaction of the other students and teammates in the school. And so to not have that around, and that, that's all humans. I mean, we're, we're built that way. We're social creatures. And when we don't have that interaction, when we're forced to quarantine to, to protect ourselves. Um, your brain can do some weird things. You know, it can start, it can start really making you, you know, feel different just because that social connection is what gives us meaning and, and well-being. Um, but I'm surprised as much as I, I say that, you know, we should get off our phones more and spend more time with people. Well, now it's actually a really functional time to <laughs> stay like, on your stay on your phones, <laughs> be on social media and watch the Facebook. Like, cause like, cause you kind of have to right now. Um, no, but, uh, 
I, I've I've enjoyed this. It's been a learning process. Like I've had to learn the technology, and and try to apply um, skills that I've always used in one dimension, group settings, to an online class, which is not the same. It's it, it's similar, but it's not the same. You don't get to high five people. We don't get to you know give you like do like hugs or anything like that. Um, so the need to convey the importance of a message like a technique or just a mindset, all that uh, has become even more important. So I find myself reading, studying, looking for ways to get the message across because we still have jobs to do. Like the world has not ended. It has been altered and we all have responsibilities. And, and that's why, like I said before, the idea with fear, if you allow the fear if the fear causes you to wear the mask and wash your hands more, that's a good, useful uh, purpose for that fear. If the fear just causes you to kind of, um, uh, you know, retract away from everything and sit in a corner and just wait for it all to be over and, and take no action, then now that fear becomes crippling. Now it's like as bad as the disease. It's causing you to just sit there and... and um, and really, that's when all of our own insecurities, I think, set in. And I've witnessed this in people. I feel like I see, I see a lot of people taking charge. You see hospital workers that are like risking their own health because they have a clearly defined goal and mission. And then we have people that are staying at home, which is, which is fine. That's, that's what you're kind of supposed to be doing. Um, but I know they're losing their minds because they they think like it's it's gonna creep my window, it's gonna get me, and I'm not undermining the like the the potential for um, anyone to get sick. That all has to be taken care of. But but that's not a reason to not be eating healthy, to not be writing your goals down, to not catch up on reading, to not be exercising, getting in the best shape of your life. Like one thing we told the kids is like they should be getting more of their character stripes now than they ever had before because they have the time and they have the ability. Um, but when I was a kid. If we got like a day off because it rained too much, oh, it was it was just like, you know, it was it was like uh, it was like a little a little break. I didn't want to think about school. I didn't want to think about anything. And um, you know, if my parents were having a good day, they would they would make me do something. If they were having a bad day, they'd let me get away with it. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to tell the parents. It's like, hey, keep them in, on track with their goals. Make them attend the classes because they're going to get the value out of it during the time. It. it I, like what you were saying, it's easy to go into this mindset that everything is terrible, especially right now is whenever you turn on the TV or you scroll through Instagram or Facebook, and that's what you see. And I, <laughs> I saw something pretty, uh, pretty funny. It was like anytime you see an article that says could happen, might happen, uh, this is a possibility. It's like just keep scrolling. It's like <laughs> the only thing that you're you're getting from that is the clickbait nature of oh, this might happen, someone's gonna click this and they're gonna be like, oh my goodness, the world's ending. But then there's also the other side of it that's uh, saying, oh, this is nothing, let's just toss it aside and throw a party. But uh, there's a different way that you can look at it and I think that uh, we've kind of grown uh, to look at it that way now because of what we have to do for the classes and, um, and even for ourselves, but try to find the positivity in your situation, which can be hard, especially, um, if your situation is pretty bad. But you can find little bits of your life that you can make better because of the situation. So like I said for myself, I started reading a lot more, but when this is all over, what can I take away from what I'm doing now that can better my life? So like for school, I hope this is something that, that continues, is like not having so much pressure on classroom-based learning because a lot of what can be done uh, can be done outside of the classroom and can be taken care of by me just um, doing it on my own. So what we're doing now for school is um, it's like a 30 minute lecture where they kind of go over the content and then I'm left to my own devices to take care of that. Now now some people might th not thrive in that that situation but for me I, I really like that and I, I hope an option like that <clears throat> kind of persists after this and I know for us with uh, teaching in the classes we're, we're already talking about continuing the amount of virtual content that we're putting out so we're learning from this situation and we can take away from what's going on now in not such a uh, great time to what we can do afterward and continue to grow and take this time to grow and not 
plateau and where we're at. So uh, if you want to talk on that about Well, yeah, process. it's like the, the concept of never waste a crisis, right? Like bad things are going to happen um, in life. As long as people are running around uh, and nature is running around and they're, the two are, you know, together, they're going to be um, hurdles and challenges. And some are temporary, some are local. Like we had Hurricane Harvey was very challenging for this region of the country um this is something everybody's feeling together but the the reality is there are there are people that are going to come out and find real purpose because of this situation and that doesn't mean that the situation is good obviously it isn't but there's no if there's nothing you can do to really um you know, little to nothing you can do to change the reality of a bad situation, but you can bring some good, uh, bring forth a positive outcome, even just for yourself, then that ought to be your entire focus. Like, like we were saying, like these, these online classes, well, this is something that we could probably continue to offer students when we start having group classes again for students who are traveling or maybe they're at home for you know some reason or they can't make class, but now they can attend the class virtually. They can be involved that way. We never did a whole lot of video content. Now that's all we're doing all day. So we continue to do that, put that out. Now we have more value that we can offer in a broader range, not just for the students that are showing up to classes. And um, and I just want to say one thing too. It's like uh, about the situation. I feel like it it puts things in perspective. Like my wife uh, Ingrid was saying this the other day. She's like, it's interesting how um, something like this actually kind of evens everyone out in a way like every since everyone you know is potentially susceptible to something like this um it it, in a way it kind of shows us our humanity you know money although it it can make a difference in terms of treatment and thing like things like that obviously but um you know but money fame riches none of that you know matters in a situation like this It, it puts things on a more even you know uh uh, playing field and and I think that's important to you know to sometimes be stripped away of the um, the parts of life that aren't aren't really real you know like um, you know what we can say is real is that we're born we have a little bit of time here and then and then we're done and we have different beliefs and we have different backgrounds and different cultures and different um, races and ethnicities and in the end we're all human and we're we can all actually identify with this and so i think uh and the other thing you know kind of about that it it puts little problems to the side to focus on something more important and i feel like the way people are programmed is like we just want to have something to complain about so when things are going really well we find problems and when a real problem like this finds its way into our lives we put those kind of nonsense problems to the side and we focus on solving a real problem um but the reality is with the exception of a few weeks ago this is almost certainly the best time in history to be alive in terms of human well-being and opportunity and i think the fact that we get to share our passion what we love instantaneously online with somebody on the other side of the world is testament to the opportunity that everybody has and can take advantage of. Um, You know, you hear these doomsday type mindsets and pessimistic people saying that, oh, things are worse than they've ever been and this is the worst thing ever. It's like, well, you really should read a history book because if (laughs) if, if you look at human history, there was a time period, if you go back far enough probably where people didn't talk then we learned how to talk and we learned about death and we realized that oh we don't like this death thing even though the average human lifespan back then was maybe 30 years old and it was a really painful death and when someone in your tribe died you had to keep walking for safety and food then we had um we developed agriculture and we learned how to feed ourselves but we didn't have cures for all the diseases we didn't understand the ways of the world and so Pick any time in history that would be that you'd rather live in than now, 
and I don't think anyone would choose anything. Maybe a white man in 1950s <laughs> in America, right? Sure, you know, but I mean, imagine seriously, like a minority or a single woman or any other like nation, like when in history would you rather be alive? So that's important to reflect on because our problems are relative to what we're comparing them to. And I think a situation like this really gives us a chance to step back and say, man, a lot of what I've been maybe complaining about or feeling sorry for myself about is pretty insignificant. And I ought to focus on all the abundance that I actually have, you know, in my life. And I, I know I've kind of seen that, um, cause I'm human too. And I'll have moments, you know, where especially like having a business, like I want to grow the business and things are going good. And then, and then you tend to focus on your narrow slice of, you know, doing good. And, and then sometimes if that dips, then it's like, oh, well, we had a bad week. It's like, you idiot. You live in the 21st century with access to all the modern marvels. This is a amazing time to be alive. And anyway, I just hope that um, in spite of what, you know, we're all kind of experiencing that we recognize that this is the best time to be alive. And believe it or not, the best time to have to deal with with a problem like this because we have the best resources for helping one another and i'm really hopeful and from what i've seen i have good reason to be hopeful that we're going to come through this stronger better and more connected and more sanitary than <laughs> uh than we ever have been so anyway i think we'll end on that note anthony thank you for joining me and sharing your perspective until next time you guys be safe and I will see you online and soon enough in the class. Later. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that, please be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to share this video with somebody else. Thank you.